Okay, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to the new course, which is Digital Design in Microcomputers. Uh, I am Dr. Ambika Prasasa, Assistant Professor in Electrical Engineering Department. And I will uh, teach about this course, which is Digital Design in Microcomputers. Uh, so uh, before we start this course, uh, let me introduce why this course is actually important. So in today's lecture, we will be discussing about uh, why this course is important and uh, what kind of contents we are going to cover and how this course will be a building block to uh, to generate interest in the electronic circuits okay so because see we have already studied basic electronics in the first first year only and we know the fundamental of transistors mosfet and everything and if i have to design any digital design and digital circuits so those kind of concepts may be utilized to implement here as well. And we will try to, you, you will try to design any circuit based on those uh, transistors and the MOSFETs. Okay. So uh, this is all about this course is. Uh, another important point about this course is like, because uh, uh, we are talking about the processors, high-end processors and everything. So before designing any processor, we must know what kind of logic we have to implement. So without knowing the fundamental of logic and without knowing uh, how to design the different logics, how to design different blocks in a processor, uh, we cannot design the processor. So uh, this course is really very important, especially if uh, you plan to uh, continue your study in the VLSI design side or, or the semiconductor side. Okay. So that is why this course is somewhat very helpful to us. Okay. So let us discuss what about what is this course and what kind of things we are going to cover. In this particular course, we are going to cover uh, why we are considering digital systems as compared to the analog one. So we'll talk about what is the analog versus digital. Then we'll talk about uh, why digital or the analog. So what is the importance of digital system designs and what is the importance of analog system design? What is the advantage of digital system and what is the advantage of the, uh, analog systems and vice versa. Okay, so we'll also talk about this one. Then we will talk about what are the different advantages of digital system over the analog systems. Okay, so this is what we will talk. Yeah, so this, this particular lecture is going to be a, a basic fundamental of all the contents uh, about the digital systems. And then uh, tomorrow onwards, we'll start our actual course content, okay? Then one very important thing is, suppose if I'm planning to design any, any uh, digital systems, in that case, because uh, in the real world, most of the information or the data is in the form of analog one, okay? All the informations are in the analog form. Like suppose I have to convert a voice signal into the digital form. So the voice signal is nothing but this is the analog signal having the different amplitude at different instead of time. Okay. So if the signal is like analog uh, and I have to convert into the digital because nowadays every processor, all the processing must be done through the digital world. Okay. So I have to convert into the analog and digital. So we'll talk about how we can convert the digital, uh, how analog signal into the digital one and, uh, and what are the different stages which we have to follow. So that we will talk about uh, the conversion. Now we'll talk about how actually it makes, like what is the basic building block of designing any digital circuit. Because see, the analog signals, whatever the signals we are receiving here and there, those all the signals are analog one. Okay. But because I have to process through a digital block, I must uh, design a circuitry that can convert an analog signal into the digital one. Okay. So uh, I will talk about how basically we can start designing any digital circuits and, and how we can activate, how we can uh, process it. So this is what about we'll discuss here. And very important thing is, suppose if I'm talking about the digital system design, digital circuits, where these systems are used, okay? So we'll talk about some real-time real -time examples where this, this, this kind of system are required and, uh, uh, and we'll discuss all those things. And the important thing is because, uh, Everyone uh, is must be knowing how these blocks looks like. 
And uh, if I'm talking about digital ICs, digital, digital integrated circuits or analog ICs, how this IC actually looks like and how to identify those ICs because you must have seen many black boxes in the ICs, many in the boards. If you, if you can see the motherboard of your system, then there are many chips that are placed in bit, on the board. Okay, but how to identify what is the function of those ICs and uh, how they have been designed, what kind of technology they have used, this kind of information you can extract just reading some of the words which is pasted on the top of those IC, ICs. So we'll also talk about how they do look like and how to identify the IC and the function of that IC without any multimeter or without any uh, testing. Just by seeing the numbers on the top of that IC, we can identify the function of that IC as well. Okay, so this we'll talk about. And then uh, we will also talk about, suppose if we can identify from the uh, black box, what it looks like, okay? Then how the structure is placed inside that IC, we'll also try to see, okay? And then we'll talk about what are the different level of integrations. Like suppose if I have a less number of function, then we have to deal with the less number of transistor or less number of the blocks. But if I have to, uh, uh, operate n number of functions or if I have to design a processor with multitasking in that case number of modules inside the chip will be more okay so uh, we'll talk about what are the different level of integration and this level of integration is nothing but this depends on how many functions we want to execute from that particular integrated circuit okay so the level of integration is nothing but this is uh, completely depends on the a logic function which we want to implement from that integrated circuit. Okay, uh, in case of any doubt, uh, you can ask the question anytime, it's not a problem, right? So we can, uh, I will be uh, happy to answer your all the questions if you have any question at any uh, point of time, right? Okay, so this is all about which we are going to cover in today's lecture. So let us start with what is the analog versus digital signals? Like we know that Analog signal, I just told you, the analog signals are those signals which uh, like uh, the, the amplitude of those signals are continuously changing with respect to time. Like each delta change in the time, the amplitude will change. It will not be constant. So those kind of signals are known as the analog signal. Like simple example, like if you can see the simplest example of analog signal is the sine wave. Okay. We know that the sine wave is nothing but yeah. Similarly, if we talk about a digital signal, digital signal are those signals which are having some discrete voltage levels, okay? So, yeah, we will discuss about uh, all these things in more detail, what is the analog and digital, but the basic difference between analog signal and the digital signal is that the analog signal varies, keep on varying with respect to time, okay? Whereas if I'm considering the digital signal, they try to maintain some voltage level for some instant of time. Why I'm saying try to maintain, this is really very important. Okay, so suppose if I try to draw, draw the uh, some of the simplest function, which are the analog and the digital one. So they look like, like yes, sine, sine wave is the, simplest example of the analog signal. So if you see here, at each instant of time, we will see the different amplitude. At this particular time, we will be having a different amplitude. At this instant of time, we will be having a different amplitude. At this instant of time, we will be having a different amplitude. So at each instant of time, we will be having the different amplitude in this particular signal, okay? And the, the amplitude is keep on changing with respect to time. So we can call them the analog signal. One very important thing is, it is not necessary if I'm talking about the analog signal, this is always a sinusoidal wave, okay? The analog signal could also be something like this. Suppose if the waveform is changing something like this, this is also the analog signal, but it means the amplitude is changing with respect to time. So we can also call them the analog signal, okay? So this is also the analog signal. Now, if we talk about the digital signal, the digital signal is nothing but we have two discrete levels, uh, either zero or, or one, 
so uh, it is not necessary the logic zero is always zero volt and the logic one is always something like higher voltage let us assume plus five volt no it is not necessary digital signal yeah we we must accept that digital signal have two logic levels low, low logic and the high logic but it is not necessary that logic low is always zero volt logic low and logic high means there should be some potential difference between these two logics suppose i have a signal having the logic low voltage the low logic voltage is minus 5 volt and the high logic is 0 volt so this will also be act as a digital signal where this minus 5 volt is the logic 0 and the 0 volt is will act as a logic 1 because 0 volt is higher than this minus 5 volt but it means this minus 5 volt will act as a logic 0 and 0 volt will act as a logic 1. Similarly we can have some more examples like suppose I have a, a 2 voltage levels which is minus 5 volt and the plus 5 volt okay in this case this plus 5 volt will act as a logic 1 whereas this minus 5 volt will act as a logic 0. And other other combination could also be there. Like so, we can have one more combination like the zero volt and the five volt. Okay, so this five volt will act as a logic one, and the zero will act as a logic zero volt. Okay, so th these are the different combination of digital signals. Like so, the important point of consideration here is the if I am talking about two logic levels, it does not means that low logic is always zero. Low logic means the lowest potential and the high logic means the higher potential. Okay, so this is all about the uh, analog and digital signals. One more thing I just told you before. Uh, if I'm talking about the digital signal, digital signals uh, maintain, try to maintain the logic level for a certain period of time. If you see here, the logic high is maintained for this particular time period. Okay which is acting as a logic one. Similarly, if we talk about a logic low, so this, this is the time period at which the out the, the voltage uh, is at logic low. Okay. One more thing, why I'm saying try to hold the same logic, because whatever the logic we have, this is based on the charge and discharge of the capacitances. We'll, we'll talk about this charging and discharging later on, where, where we'll talk about the simple and whole circuits. Simples and whole circuit means like we have simple sum of the signals then that signal will be uh, hold for a certain period of time but there is some probability that even though if we try to hold the logic by charging the capacitor might be the capacitor will get some path to discharge it so the voltage level will always be not same like it can discharge up to certain voltage levels there is some possibility like the voltage level is not the same for all the time. That is why I am saying it will try to hold the logic. But yes, because the rate of degradation in the voltage level is not that much sufficient that can flip the logic. So that is why we can consider it as a logic high and the vice versa. Okay. Yeah. All these things I will discuss in detail later on when I will talk about the noise margin and other things like how we decide the noise margin, what are the factors which we can consider, especially while designing the digital systems. Okay, so this is the basic difference between the analog and the digital signals. Okay, now let us talk about why digital or the analog circuits why it is important why we are talking about the digital signal in the in analog signal so <coughs> let me briefly explain the difference between these two things if i'm talking about the analog signal so uh, uh, what, what we have in the analog signal we can have all the possible values whatever we have okay in the analog signal or analog analog systems, we can have all the possible input voltages that we can accommodate in these systems. But whereas if I'm talking about the digital system, here we can have a few discrete values only. It is not necessary, it is not possible to accommodate all the possible values which was present in the analog signal. In, if I'm talking about the digital one, 
In digital one, we can suppose if I have only two logic levels, then we can accommodate only two logic, logic zero and logic one. Okay, so this is the basic difference between analog and digital one. So, uh, important uh, another important thing is like, uh, uh, yeah, I just told you like we can have a, a, a usually the analog signals are easy to analyze. Suppose I have a, a real world signal. Okay, and the real world signal is nothing but this is in the analog form. So uh, we can simply analyze like uh, whatever the signal we are receiving. Suppose I am receiving something like this kind of signal. We have to process this signal immediately. But the important thing is like the probability of noise occurrences in the analog signal is more. What is the impact of this noise? Let me repeat it again what I am saying. If I am talking about the analog signal, the probability like uh, uh, the like if i have some error some noise present in the signal that can change the logic levels what it means suppose i have a signal something like this let me so, so let me uh, let me try to draw some sinusoidal solar signal let us assume i have the waveform something like this and some noise is inserted over here on this sinusoidal waveform so let us assume if some noise is there so the waveform will look like, let us assume it is looking like this, okay? What it means, if I have analog signal and I have used the precise comparator to decide whatever the voltage logic is there. So a small fluctuation in the voltage that can lead to the different value or that can lead to a different kind of states. So the noise can affect in this uh, analog signal more as compared to the digital one. Suppose I have a digital signal, something like this, having a two logic levels, okay? And if I have a two logic levels and there is some noise on the voltage levels, so, so it will look like this, okay? Here we can have a waveform something like this because we have some certain noise margin which can tolerate these noises, like up to certain voltage levels will consider it as a logic low. And up to the certain voltage levels, we can consider it as a logic zero. So what it means, even though there is a sub fluctuation in the voltage levels, because this can, uh, this is in, in the range, whatever we have decided for the noise margin. So it will always act as a logic one. Similarly for logic, logic zero as well. So the effect of noise is less in this case as compared to the analog one. Because if I'm talking about the analog one, we are we are keep on you uh, like uh, utilizing the input signal for the processing. Okay, and if there is certain changes in the input signal might be that can affect the logic that can affect the performances. So the effect in analog is more as compared to the digital one. Okay, uh, one more thing, because uh, we are talking about the uh, analog signal. Analog signal is nothing but these signals are the real, uh, real, real world signal which we are receiving and which we are trying to process it. Let us assume uh, I have a microphone. Okay, I, I'm, I'm speaking something. I am receiving some in a different magnitude at different instead of time. Okay, if different magnitude at different instead instead of that will amplify each amplitude equally and 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 it will give the output one okay so we do not know whatever the input i will provide that will be amplified by the, with the help of amplifier and then we can get at the output okay but if i am talking about the digital digital is not like that Suppose I have analog signal and in, if I have to process that analog signal through the digital systems, in that case, what I have to do, I have to convert that analog signal into the digital first, then I can apply some processing so that I can amplify it. Let me repeat it again what I'm saying. Suppose I have a digital signal, which I have received uh, just like a voice signal. The simple amplifier, what it will do, it will simply receive the input signal and that will amplify whatever the input we are receiving. Okay, so there is no, 
conversion of the input signal that will simply amplify based on whatever it will receive okay but if i am talking about the digital amplifier or or like uh, digital kind of things in that case because the input is always analog right so i have to convert that input signal into the digital first then i have to process it and then after processing again i have to convert that digital signal into the analog form okay so what we need we need analog to digital converter and then amplifier then digital to analog converter so if i'm talking about a simple amplifier like analog kind of things so I, let us assume i have a amplifier if let us assume i have an input signal something like this okay i have received some signal so at, what i will do let us assume i have an amplifier so what it will do it will simply amplify this signal okay and that will look like this one but if i'm talking about the digital kind of things then what i have to do suppose i have received some signal something like this in that case i have to use one block which we are calling it analog to digital converter adc then i have to process this uh, pass this adc through the amplifier <clears throat> then once it is amplified i have to again convert it into the digital to analog converter then i will get the output something like this okay amplified version so this these are the different stages which are involved in the digital system now the important thing is why we are converting the signal if i have to get the output into the digital world because if i have to store any information then the digital way is the is the simplest way or the easiest way to store any data analog uh, the data cannot be stored uh, properly we have to convert this analog data into the digital form then we can invert uh, we can we can store those data into the digital okay so that is why we need to convert into the analog form uh, digital form and then we have to do something like that so these are some of the advantages and disadvantages of analog and digital and we have to take care of all those things okay. yeah in detail because see uh, this course is basically de uh, dedicated to the digital design not to the analog design because uh, you will uh, you will go through one of course which is analog analog electronics in uh, uh, six semester so you will study about all those things in those courses okay yeah so some of the benefit if i'm talking about the benefit of digital over analog is like reproducibility like suppose i just told you because uh, if i have converted the data into the digital one from analog to digital so we can store it and we can utilize it as many times as we want so the reproducibility is uh, easier in the digital as compared to the analog one because see that the same kind of analog signal cannot be reproduced uh, all the time but if i have data in the bit stream form like 0101 logic pattern so this uh, data digital data can be uh, reproduced or reutilized whenever we want so this is one of the benefit uh, second benefit like not affected by noise means the better quality yeah i just explained in the previous slide like if i have some noise which is present in the signal in the digital signal and if it is in the range of noise margin so that noise will not affect the performance the logic will be same logic will be maintained there will be no effect uh, in the digital kind of signals but if i am talking about the analog one then that that can affect the the quality if i have uh, some noise present in the system okay third and important thing like easy to design yes uh, we will understand uh, why the digital systems are much easier to design as compared to uh, as compared to the analog one so this answer uh, this uh, answer of this question i will discuss just after 5 minutes okay so please wait how these systems are easier to design as compared as compared to the analog one okay so i will tell you uh data production yeah definitely because if i'm talking about a digital one so uh, we will store the data somewhere here and there and we can protect those data so the data protection is 
easy or uh, uh, like the production is possible in the digital as compared to the analog one. Yeah, so these are some of the things. Programmable, like if I want to do some operation with the digital world, we can do it. We can, we can program it based on our requirement because the most of the processor deal with the digital data. Okay, so we can program accordingly as per our need, we can program it. So the digital data is really very important. Yeah, speed of operation because we are we are transmitting only two logic levels, zero and one. Okay, so we don't need to take care of the different logic levels. So the transmission speed will be or the bit a bit rate will be faster as compared to the analog one. Because if I'm talking about the analog one, in analog one we can have multiple level logic levels. So we have to decide the uh, the logic level or the voltage level uh, different at each instead of time and that will that that will take more uh, time to predict and transmit whereas if i'm talking about a digital one here we will be having only two logic levels and that will be easy to transmit and the receive so that that is why we can call it the speed economy yeah because i just told you uh, the design is very easy and if it is easy to design then the design point of view the design it will take less time to design so r and d will be less so the it will be economical yeah this is very important like uh, when i will teach about one course which is the vlsi design in the in the fifth semester uh, at that time you will be able to understand why uh, this is really very important like why the people are mostly dealing with the digital side or digital circuit designs not the analog circuit design yes uh, most of the portion in the processor is covered by the digital systems only, digital blocks only, not the analog one. So this is only because of the economical, easy to design, uh, R&D can be done easily. So this is these are some of the benefit uh, of uh, digital systems as compared to the analog one. Okay. Now let's talk about how to get the digital signal from the analog one. Yes. So let me try to explain these things yeah this thing will be discussed in more detail when you will talk about the communication systems like uh, in in some of the semesters you will you will study one course which is the communication engineering there you will talk about suppose i have an analog signal and i have to convert that analog signal into the digital one then how to do that so there are different stages that are involved while converting any analog signal into the digital one okay so let us assume i have an analog signal something like this yeah the black dotted line is nothing but i have an analog signal okay and this the pink one that indicates like the digital signals okay but the important thing how we can do like that if we can compare before i uh, I, I explain the different uh, stages which are involved in this conversion let me explain a few things. If I'm talking about, if I'm talking about this analog one, this is nothing but this is the analog signal. Okay. If you see here, the analog signal has the different amplitude at different instead instead of times. Okay. So the actual information, whatever we have, that is uh, that we can observe in the analog one. But if I am talking about digital one, here we have one pulse having some amplitude here we have a logic zero then here we have a some one pulse which is uh, having some amplitude then logic zero <coughs> some pulse then logic zero some pulse then logic zero now if you compare the black one and this uh, pink one what we can uh, differentiate in the analog signal we have the continuity in the data whatever the information we have we are getting continuous data but in case of the digital one or the discrete information we are losing some of the information for some instead of time if you see here here actual data was something like this but what we are saying whatever the data was at this time that will be maintained for certain period of time and that will go to uh, that will goes to logic zero so here at this particular time, we are getting exact output, but at this time, 
we have the voltage actual voltage is like this but after converting into the digital the voltage level is converted to this one so this is something like we call the quantization error okay so this kind of things you will discuss in more detail in the communication systems i am not going into more detail but yes uh, to understand this fundamental you should know what this error are so this error is nothing but this is the quantization error and the process by which we are doing like this kind of sampling uh, yeah so uh, so yeah here we are getting something like this error at this instead of time the output yeah the, the voltage level must be like this but the level is something like logic zero here we have the logic high and here we have something some logic but it is maintaining for some period of time but the actual output is something like this so this is nothing but here this is the error so this is what we are expecting yeah this is our expectation but this is what we are getting similarly at this time period we must get the voltage something like this but we are getting some voltages like this so the drawback of the digital system is like we cannot reproduce uh, we cannot get the exact information whatever we have in the analog form definitely there are certain uh, advantages of digital systems okay uh, that can be utilized to to uh, that that can help us to get the reproducibility uh, storage and speed and different kind of benefit we will get uh, from the digital system but there is always some disadvantage of digital signals the one and uh, one disadvantage is we cannot reproduce exact output whatever we have in the analog form okay so the important thing is like how we do that to do that what we can do uh, simply uh, let us assume uh, how uh, the simplest example let me tell you like how we can do this particular operation something like this okay here we have an analog signal okay uh, just to understand how it works this is the switch this switching has some on and off equal on and off time okay when this switch will be on when this switch will be turned on then whatever the logic we have that will be passed through this capacitor and this capacitor will be charged okay so what will happen once this capacitor is charged, once this input is input will reach something like this this capacitor will charge because the charging time is very small so the immediately it will rise to some let me change the color okay so immediately it will rise to some voltage level okay so this capacitor will be charged then because this voltage uh, once we have charged it then this switch will be opened and because we have opened it so it will not further charge but because the discharging time constant of this capacitor is very high so it will not discharge it will maintain up to when it will not get the same logic like so this is the high voltage which will be maintained then the low logic at which the switch is off something like this so uh, logic low then uh, uh, logic high it will again charge so simple it will take the simple it will hold it will take sample at this point then it will hold sample will hold so this kind of circuitry we are calling it the sampling so uh, the sampling is a process that is the first stage to convert analog into the digital one so it will sample and it will hold for a certain period of time okay so this is how the simple and hold circuit works one more important thing i just told you because there is a high chance to lose the information if i am converting into the into the digital so how to avoid that one so if somehow i can reduce this time period on and off time if i i, I can reduce somehow then how the waveform will look like it will charge again it will it will be logic low then it will charge it will be logic low so it will be more closer to the real one okay so if the charging and discharging time constants are very less or if i somehow i can read, increase the speed of this switching then we can get the more exact uh, digital things okay so uh, like just like an analog one so these are something that need to be convert uh, that need to be uh, we should understand how it is working so i'm not going into more detail because these all things you will understand in the uh, communication systems but 
you should know uh, certain stages are important like sampling then quantization and then uh, uh, converting into the quantization into the different labels so that we call it the line coding okay so these three stages are important i'm not going into more detail <coughs> okay. now the important thing is uh, how it's made like how we can make uh, this kind of logics okay so let us try to check it uh, yeah this is the circuit which you know very well can can anyone tell you what uh, uh, tell me what kind of circuit this is and how it, it will work you may have studied in the basic electronic subject here we have one transistor t1 which is the bjt and uh, uh, we have two resistance one is the base resistance and like uh, uh, the second one is the collector so base emitter collector we have the three terminal and then uh, we have three resistances okay let us try to see how this logic circuit can act as a digital things okay if we talk about this circuit we can have a two possibilities what are those possibilities either suppose i i want to design some digital circuit based on these circuits like based on this transistor based on this resistance and this resistance so what will happen we can have a two possibilities let us assume i am providing some two logic levels okay so let us assume the logic level 1 is nothing but let us assume it is the vdd which is the supply voltage and logic 0 let us assume i am providing it it as a ground so we can have a two possibilities that we can place at input side and based on that we can observe the output okay so let us try to see how we can observe the output based on the different inputs first case is like if input is equal to 0 volt okay if input is equal to 0 volt or if the input is grounded we will not get any of the bias uh, like uh, this one base current so ib will become zero if ib will become zero this transistor will be in the off state because there is no current flow so if it is in on state so this transistor will act as a open circuited okay so this transistor will act as a open circuited and if this is acting as a open circuited what it means it means that whatever the voltage we have provided at this logic vdd we have some voltages we have some resistances so the equivalent circuit will look like this one how the equivalent circuit will look like yeah so uh, yeah I, i will discuss it later on okay so the equivalent circuit will look like this second one okay so because this transistor t1 will be the open circuited so the equivalent circuit will look like this one here we have a vdd here i have some rc so there will be some current which is the ic collector current will flow so the voltage dropped across this rc will be nothing but it is the rc into ic so the voltage output which we can observe here is nothing but vdd minus rc into ic if the rc is very small okay if rc is very small in that case this rc vc will reduce so the output voltage is very close to vdd means close to vdd means close to very high what it means if i am providing logic zero at the input side in that case at the output i will get the output which is very close to vdd and that close to vdd that depends on what is the resistance what is the current uh, through this collector okay so if rc is very small then the v output will be very close to vdd so we can say that if i am providing logic zero at the input side at the output side i i will get logic zero or uh, logic one so we can say that it is acting as a inverter okay so if i am providing logic zero i will get logic one let us talk about in other way suppose i am providing logic high high voltage like uh, let us assume i have provided vdd at the input side if i have provided vdd at the input side so we'll get sufficient voltage uh, at the base okay so this transistor t1 will be 
like uh, in the conduction mode. So this will like IC will be same as the IB. So this current will be same. Okay. So this will be in activation mode, right? So this will act as a short circuit, short circuited. And if it is acting as a short circuited, whatever the capacitor, yeah, yeah. One, one more important thing that we need, should, we need to consider here is like, let us assume I have one capacitor, which we have collect, connected at the output side, which is utilized to charge or discharge. Okay. So if I'm talking about the first case, in the first case, this capacitor CL will be charged through resistance RC. So this CL will be charged up to VDD minus RC into IC. Okay. Once it is charged, now let us talk about a second case when the input is VDD. When input is VDD in that case, because we are getting the direct path between the V output and the grounded. So this capacitor, whatever we have connected at the output voltage, that will start discharging through this transistor because the resistance of this transistor is very small. Okay, so the discharging time constant will be less. So if it can discharge, we will observe this V output is equal to zero volt because this capacitor CL will be discharged through this path. So through this path, it will be discharged. So this is how it act as a different logic levels. So if you have any questions on this, how it works, uh, you can ask the question. Otherwise, we can move ahead with this one. So here we have a, two, yeah, this is the simplest block or the digital block, which we can understand. So the transistor kind of uh, transistor level designs we have already studied in the basic electronics course, but how this basic uh, transistor can be utilized as a digital circuit, we have to understand from here. So the important thing is like, if I'm providing logic zero at the input side, we are getting the output, which is VDD minus RC into IC. And if I'm providing V in as a VDD, in that case, this capacitor will be char uh, discharged through this transistor and we will get the zero volt at the output. So let us try to map few things, V in and the V out, okay? So if V in is equal to, let us assume uh, zero volt, in that case, the output was VDD minus RC into IC. And if I talk about if V in is nothing but it is equal to VDD, in that case, we will get the, the zero volt at the output side. So this is the truth table which we can make. And this looks like in water kind of configuration. Okay. One more important thing. This is not exactly true. There is some problem here. What is that problem? Let us try to see here. Yeah, the first case, which I just told you, like if input is equal to zero volt, in that case, the transistor will act as an open circuited and this output capacitor or the CL will be charged through this RC. Okay, so this is perfectly true. That, that is perfectly fine. The output will be VDD minus RC into IC. But if I'm providing the input is equal to VDD, in that case, I'm assuming that this transistor is in the on state. But this is not necessary that if even though this transistor is in on state, it the resistance is very small. It is not necessary. There is some on resistance of this transistor as well. So the equivalent circuit will look like this one. We have some RC, which looks like this one. And we have some on resistance of transistors as well, R on of transistor. And here I have a VDD and here I have a grounded. And <coughs> here I have some load capacitance, which we have connected CL, okay? So the discharging or the voltage, like, like discharging of the CL will be done through this R on. If we see properly this circuit, this circuit looks like a voltage divider circuit, okay? So the output voltage across the CL will not be zero volt, like because this R on cannot be zero. There is some finite R on. So this, uh, the output like V out, this V out is nothing but this will be uh, VDD, whatever it was charged before. Okay, VDD 
minus RC into IC. This is the voltage which was uh, that was charged, and then that R on divided by R on plus RC. So this is the exact output voltage we will receive if the input is at logic one. Okay, so uh, exactly we will not get the logic zero. So these are some of the factors that decides what exactly output voltage is and how to decide those voltages. So these are the things. So yeah, this is nothing but this. This is to understand the concept how it works exactly. Okay, so you can design all these things. Yeah, so this is what we can do it based on this uh, simple BJT based logic. But we can also uh, uh, do this with the help of uh, MOSFET as well. And the logic will act as the same. Like uh, simply we know that because the input resistance of uh, the FET or the MOSFETs are very high. So we don't need to place any of the resistances. Direct logic can be utilized as a, something like that. So uh, as a homework, you can uh, analyze the logic level of this circuit, how whether it is acting as an inverter or not. Okay. So this is the important thing. Okay. Fine. So this is how it made. So, so uh, the important point of consideration in this slide is like to know, to understand the fundamental, like how exactly logic circuit looks like, okay. Digital circuit looks like and how we can convert these logics. Okay. So that, that we should know. Okay. Uh, so here we can utilize like transistor as a switch is the building block of the digital electronics. So it is not necessary that we have to use only the BJT. We can also utilize uh, like uh, FETs to design any of the digital systems. Okay. So we can do that. Uh, important thing is like, yes, the question is like, if I have all these kind of logic blocks, whatever we have made. Yeah. In this lecture, I, I'm just focusing on what kind of things we are going to cover in this course, like the detail and, and, and the, the detailed analysis we'll do from the tomorrow's lecture. Okay. The important thing is where these kind of circuits are used. Like, uh, think about any of the real life application of logic yet. Okay, you can think anything like suppose, suppose you have a mobile phone. Okay, and uh, if you are trying to communicate with someone, so how it is done? You are speaking somewhere, there is a microphone that, that uh, receive your voice signal and that is converted into the digital, then it processed, it encrypt the data that it convert into some, some uh, certain frequency that is import, like uh, it modulate at some frequencies, then it is transmitted. So this, like, yeah, there are several applications wherever you will see, uh, everywhere is the, uh, the digital system. Okay. So I don't need to say, uh, where the digital system is not present everywhere. Digital system is present. But if I'm talking about any other digital systems, few things that must be considered, especially if I'm talking about the digital designs. Okay. What are those things? Suppose if I'm talking about any of the system, whether it is analog system or it is digital system, we must know what are the inputs which are which we are giving to that system. So the property of input is really very important to understand what kind of input we are giving to that, that, that block. If the input is like analog uh, input, then we need some analog system that can process that data. Okay. And if you do not have the analog system, in that case, I have to convert that analog into the digital form. Okay. So the, uh, to understand the nature of input is really very important. Okay. So the, uh, the nature of input is important, especially if I'm talking about any system, then I have to talk about what is the output of that system, whether I want to get the output in terms of analog form, then it, that we have to convert the system uh, like we have to use the analog systems and if i need a digital uh, output in that case i have to use the digital systems so uh, what kind of system uh, we are utilizing that completely depends on what are the input what are what kind of outputs we want and also 
which kind of logics i need to utilize inside that box suppose if i am talking about some system having some input and some output okay so let us assume i have a four or three inputs at the input side digital inputs and i want to get like two outputs let us assume i have a three input and two outputs so i have to design a block in a such a way that uh, after uh, receiving three inputs i must convert it into the two outputs okay so uh, what kind of logic i have to utilize for this purpose we should know okay so in any of the digital system while designing any digital system we should know the three important thing what kind of inputs i have what kind of outputs i want and to get this input and output patterns what kind of logics i need to implement inside the block that can give the output based on your requirement so these three things must be known to each and every one uh, and once you are ready with these things you will be able to understand the digital systems